Welcome to day 4. Smiles got bad for bikini bottom trampoline. From the very start I feel we sure are down to some obscurity. At least for me because in the game Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, there apparently were trampolines that could help you with the jump. It was planned to have them in order to launch the player higher but for some reason the feature had to be patched out. So developers made very sure that each and every one of such trampolines are out of the game. All of them but one. Because it seems as they forgot to look behind this particular town in the Gulagun Pier. Now perhaps they intentionally kept one, maybe as an easter egg kind of thing. But I personally didn't find much information on this. All I know is thanks to this short by Jeremy Klinger, suggested by the OP itself. These last few seconds of it in particular. Let's have a look. This last one is just kind of cool. During development, the trampolines in the game were planned to launch you higher if you bubble bounced on them, but the feature was eventually scrapped. It does remain in the final game though. Behind this town on the Gulagoon Pier, there's a hidden trampoline that they must have forgotten about. Pretty neat. And how was that figured out? Uh, let's not even worry about that. Boom. Next up we have... Okay, next we have... Did you hear that? Yeah, that. That's what's next. The sound for a disappointing situation is what this entry is about. And it's called... Boom. That's pretty much it for this one actually. So let's move on. Are you ready kids? Aye, aye, kids. album. As the name suggests, this entry simply refers to the various Spongebob music albums out there like the Yellow Album, the Best Day Ever, and of course the very first compilation album that came out on the 10th anniversary of the show in 2009, Spongebob's Greatest Hits. Well, just to name a few. Yeah, that's all good, but of course nothing as good as... Patty Ingredients now the world knows that nobody knows the main ingredient which makes Krabby Patty Krabby Patty. That is what Mr. Krabs have been hiding away from Plankton. And of course when there's something like that in the show, there would be theories. And there would be dark theories. The darkest one probably being that cheeseburgers have cheese, chicken burgers have chicken in them. Veggie burgers have all kinds of veggies. So Krabby Patty, uh, what, crabs? But wait, Mr. Krabs is a crab. Imagine a restaurant where humans sold human burgers with real human flesh in them, but that's not the most famous theory about it now anyway. Let's walk through the one which is. Remember in tier 3 we discussed the Alex Bale video in which he tackles multiple bikini bottom mysteries. I remember carefully scripting that part to not give away too much because I knew this entry is on the way and then things just would have sounded repetitive right now had I said it all back then. So in the end of that Alex Bale video, one of those mysteries that he discusses is actually the unknown Krabby Patty ingredient. Remember the whale that Mr. Krabs killed which he proves that was with a few supportive points like the easy access that Mr. Krabs has to all the Krabby Patty ingredients and that how common it is in Bikini Bottom to buy and sell actual seafood, he tries to prove how the secret ingredient in the Krabby Patty is actually that whale's carcass. Uh, yeah, so the whale that is Pearl's mother. In other words, if that's true, Bikini Bottom citizens bite onto Pearl's mom's dead meat every time they hog onto a Krabby Patty. Even Pearl herself. So now you might say, if that is true, one day when Mr. Krabs will run out of the, you know, there will be no more Krabby Patty, right? Well, as a big finish, in the very end, Alex also adds that Mr. Krabs, being the miser kind that he is, of course didn't just adopt Pearl after killing her mother, only out of kindness. Because one day, sooner or later, when he sure is going to need the whale meat that's been making Krabby Patty, Krabby Patty, then, you know. Although some might say that it's a bit of a stretch because the producers of the show had already stated that it's a vegan patty. But Alex Bale goes on to debunk even their claim as well. And come on man, it's Alex Bale we're talking about. <sighs> Show's producer. What do they know? And despite, do we have anything else to hold on to? Like, what do you guys think is the secret ingredient? I know what I thought for the longest time. I thought Krabby Patty has Krabby. Yeah, that Pokemon. That's how clueless we are with this. Plankton's curiosity indeed is totally understandable. Give Jellyfish Fails a Chance was the finale. Even if you haven't seen the season 7 episode SpongeBob's Last Stand, when you hear this song, You might realize it's a resemblance to All we are saying is give peace a chance. That's all we're saying. 
as it's a little parody of the famous John Lennon song that's to protest against war. Just as SpongeBob and Patrick's song is protesting against the Shelly Superhighway going through jellyfish fields. Yeah, jellyfish fields, not strawberry. In fact, the harmonica sounds almost identical to the one in the Beatles song. And Patrick dons a similar look to Lennon during the final scene of the song as well. So much Beatles in this one, yeah? Loving it. But that is not the only reason why it is here as you might have noticed in the name of the entry. Because apparently this episode was one of the couple of attempts that had been made to have the series finish with the finale. But well, looks like the show is too big to just end like that. This video here by Channel Federated, however, sure does end with this fact. The 107th entry on the list of 107 Spongebob facts that he talks about in this video. Let's have a quick look. Number 107. The show has already had two series finales. The first movie was meant to be the grand finale of SpongeBob SquarePants, but the network couldn't let it go. Then the SpongeBob's Last Stand special was going to mark the end of the series, but the network couldn't let it go. As of right now, the network still can't let it go. Well, that's a nice name for the final episode, by the way. To call this episode a piece of utter shit would be an insult to shit. Mr. Enter. Mr. Enter, or now known as the mysterious Mr. Enter, is a content creator, author, artist who is probably best known for being a YouTube critic for his unique roasts of cartoons in general, a bunch of which are on SpongeBob. And he's here in the iceberg not only because of the entertainment quality of the videos, but for how he likes to go a bit over the top when putting his thoughts on the table. I watched both his SpongeBob related and other videos, and I must say, over the top. Without the disgusting visual gimmicks, this episode has no legs to stand on. It wants to gross you out, and if it doesn't, it'll only end up boring you. There is no reason for this episode to exist other than nausea fuel. It's an excuse to be as gross as possible, and a flimsy excuse at that. I don't know who would be vile enough, repulsive enough, disgusting enough to think that this would be a good idea, and then to actually make a goddamn episode about it. Who wrote this? Three. This episode had three writers. How is that possible? How did three professional level writers come forth with this crap when a five-year-old would know better and throw it in the trash? These three do not deserve to have jobs. They deserve to be fired immediately and blacklisted. There's putting no effort into something, and then there's putting effort into making something as utterly horrible as possible. Uh, yeah. Of course, it's just for some good old internet fun, so be sure to check him out if you haven't already. She doesn't like to talk about it. Mrs. Puff is a widow. This is not directly said, but most certainly indirectly indicated, just like many other mysteries in the show. And although Alex Bale may not agree, her husband is still alive. Woo! Let's see what it is about at least. In the season 2 episode Trusty Love, the first episode where Mr. Krabs falls in love with something besides money, that something or rather someone is Mrs. Puff. When Mr. Krabs hears the name of Mrs. Puff for the first time, no, he doesn't go all Mandark's love theme for Dee Dee over her. He rather gets sad to hear the title Mrs. Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Understandable. However, SpongeBob quickly relieves Mr. Krabs by saying that she is single. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Which sounds great, and SpongeBob certainly looks happy to let Mr. Krabs know that. Obviously confused, Mr. Krabs then wonders what's Mrs. all about in that case. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? Who is her husband? Where is he? Is he rich? To which Spongebob responds, She doesn't like to talk about it. She doesn't like to talk about it. After which we get to see this. Now there are many such random things in the show and what's crazy to me is that how characters say these spontaneous things out of the blue and the other character immediately understands it like, yeah, it's very obvious. Well, clearly not so because we humans don't know what this should exactly mean. But it's theorized that this out of the context scene is shown as a nice way to say that her husband is no more. Uh, okay, well, something that brings the context into this is the thought that perhaps Mr. Pop was killed and made into a light bulb. Therefore, also notice something. Miss Krabs asks, "What happened to Mr. Puff? What happened to Mr. Puff?" He could have been made to ask anything else, like where is Mr. Puff or who is Mr. Puff, you know, so on and so forth. But he particularly asks, What happened to Mr. Puff? Followed by, Should that mean that this is what's happened to Mr. Puff? Makes sense? Yeah? No? I guess? Anyways. This can also be linked to the SpongeBob movie where how a fish was made into a light bulb. 
firstly meaning that it is possible that Mrs. Puff's husband would have met the same fate, as apparently it seems as it is a thing for fishes to be turned into like bulbs in Bikini Bottom, and also meaning that maybe, maybe, that was Mr. Puff himself. Squidward becomes snail. This can either sound like something downright silly to you or something that makes perfect sense. So in the season 1 episode I was a teenage Gary, Squidward accidentally injects the syringe of snail plasma into Spongebob. Rather than Gary as it was meant to improve Gary's poor health and not to turn Spongebob into a snail. Because that's exactly what happens. A while later when Squidward accidentally gets injected by the syringe as well. He turns into a snail too. Only difference is that we don't see him becoming a snail. Okay, so does that mean it's a deleted scene? <laughs> nonsensical. And that's what many people say. Others on the other hand are intrigued by the fact that the transition that is used from this scene to this scene isn't the usual bubble transition. Rather we get this comparatively lazier shift between the scenes, which cuts to the squid word already being a snail. Now either this is actually a case of a deleted scene or a less used transition used at the perfectly wrong timing. And that too could further mean that either that was clearly a choice of transition that shouldn't have been made in such a scene where a cut mattered so much and this confusion was completely unforeseen or it was indeed foreseen that the cut would matter this much and the makers still kept the transition just to intrigue all this interest into fans to initiate this wild goose chase for some reason. Yeah, weird I know but if true it completely fulfilled the purpose. Any porn in the store? Any porn in the store? In the previous tale, we talked about midlife crustacean, right? The season 3 episode in which Mr. Krabs finds the worst possible way to deal with his midlife crisis by joining the fun activities as Spongebob and Patrick execute during the night. Although as we discussed, the episode is banned due to the panty raid that comes in the end. There is another little thing in the middle of the episode that might also have contributed into the ban. Well, actually not sure, but see this and be the judge. Hello gang, SpongeBob's bad. Let's party! Any part in this store? Now what, what did he say there? Any part in this store? Fans have always been confused. Many think it's any party in the store. Some say any port in the storm, like you know, port, storm, scraps was a pirate, so it makes sense he using such words in his day-to-day -day life. And obviously more than any other word in the sentence, we're of course most concerned with. Do you think he said what it seems as he's saying? No way. Well nobody knows for sure anyway, so let's imagine because why not? And actually if you notice, any part in this store? looks like even Mr. Krabs is confused about what he just said right after saying it. Any part in this store? So who are we to say anything about it anyway? Day with SpongeBob. A day with SpongeBob SquarePants in a nutshell seems it's just a rumor as it always has been. A rumor that received more attention than a rumor could ever wish for. It all started with this Amazon webpage about this so called movie which displayed a release date of it, a description about the storyline, a cover which shouts SpongeBob in each and every pixel of it. And after the release date, if nothing else, we sure got this review over here. I mean dude, what did you watch? Because the movie didn't come out on the promised date. Leading to a branching chain of investigatory efforts that are too much to put all in this iceberg video where we're expected to mainly go over the crux of the topic. But no matter what went into this, despite the paramount research work it took by the folks, the sleuthing, the groups, the hopeless attempts, the phone calls for almost 10 long years from the fans and people determined over the internet to find anything related to this thing, nothing was ever found. Pretty much like Saki Sanobashi, something that now seems like wasn't ever there, but took so much of hit and error that despite knowing that we're at the point where we'll be happy with just anything, even fan media like reenactment of sorts, as it feels like we deserve that for all the hours we poured into it, right? Just to justify the trouble we went through for it. 
like how I think I better justify the delay in this video that this entry caused by using the original super long script written during the research into this movie and making it into a separate dedicated video as I'm surely skipping a lot of it in order to give you a glimpse but for now this is basically all there is to it in a nutshell a day with spongebob square pants that never came you got the nose wrong squidward is talented i hope it doesn't start sounding like a pattern where we're simply theorizing some bikini bottom creature being smart or whatnot handpicking one underwater character at random tagging few instances from the show on it and coming up with unpredictable qualities in them just for some thrill well don't worry as far as this iceberg is concerned this is the last entry like this and one that you might actually believe like fans mostly do believe that squidward is talented let's take a couple of examples and have a closer look in the season 2 episode artist unknown it's theorized that although squidward may not clearly be as good of an artist as spongebob at first but certainly carries certain qualities that an artist in a real world may do underrated misunderstood unnoticed genius of an artist with attributes like adhering to the basics even when trying out fancy stuff to keep simplicity as a soul of his work being nervous in competitions and being unable to come out well at all when being being stared down upon but at the same time being able to perform much better when intrigued by a meaningful reason turning one's anguish into art beyond unthinkable skill just to achieve a purpose how many great thinkers of the world have been able to do in the human history after being pushed to the edge by their miseries having their passion helped turn their unfortunate events into impressive results utilizing hardships to their advantage bringing hope to humankind just by being themselves now for another example this time from the season 1 in the beginning of the episode squidward the unfriendly ghost we clearly see how squidward this time has been shown with the best of its work right at the beginning we talk about the sculpture the painting etc more interestingly though as opposed to what spongebob drew in most of the previously discussed episode squidward drew himself nothing but squidward all around is what we see and that's where this theory really takes its shape maybe maybe squidward is a great artist as we can surely see here but with a couple of issues for starters squidward is clearly able to draw paint shape himself very well and to do the same with other things he seems to need a bit of a push so we could see it as he specializes in self portraits like many artists around the real world specialize that's what they do best and they do it without any fear of being judged because that is what they like that is what they are like and when you do what you like everything else pretty much loses the ability to affect you much maybe that's how squidward is able to deal with all the negativity by just making self portraits the stuff he likes secondly squidward is able to draw the cartoon world just fine and not the real world unless he's been triggered of course and spongebob on the other hand is quite the opposite of this you might say somehow we only ever get to see spongebob making the real world figures and not the bikini bottom graphics so we can't really say that he might be good at that as well unless there is an episode where we saw spongebob struggling with cartoon drawing uh yeah because there actually is one if you remember in the season 2 episode frank and doodle spongebob couldn't draw himself so he can draw this this and what not but not this interesting the answer to this may be a little enlightening because it's perhaps possible that in their world the concept of what's difficult and what's easy is quite the opposite as in in the world of bikini bottom they can draw us humans easily and not themselves like how we can draw cartoonish figures relatively much easily than ourselves and the real world around us if you see what i'm saying okay and i promise this is the last one in the season 7 episode the masterpiece but we see here is squidward making an art that represents something other than himself this is where it also makes us think about all this from a whole new angle because it's maybe a case where the art itself becomes a problem for the artist as so far as we've seen in the show with how squidward mostly is like he's clearly repulsive to the ones around him people seem to dislike him they at least don't love him half as much as they might be willing to love spongebob as just like people we may dislike in our lives the bikini bottom characters dislike squidward's behavior how he sounds how he appears to be how he appears to be is how these arts appear to be what the theory tries to say is that these arts remind people of squidward something that they don't think is lovable and so gets passed around by people without a second thought the image of squidward's face stands tall between the viewer and the art like you're more likely to like a painting of someone you love and the one of someone you dislike 
even if the latter is a better painting. If only Squidward would try making something other than himself more often, then it might get noticed. But then again, why should he? As an artist can make anything he or she wants, so it's not a mistake. At best, we can only call it a reason, not a fault. And these are our theories and we have no way to tell Squidward what he can do to fix it. And even if we could, why would we? As he is doing what he loves, making stuff for himself, something any true artist should be allowed to do. So basically, everyone. So Squidward shall forever be stuck in the notion of not being good enough, thanks to the habit that he can't get rid of, thanks to the perception of people that people can't get rid of, and thanks to the innate nature of judging an art, not by the nuances, but by the overall look of it. And with that, Thanks to you as well for making it through this tear as well. See you in the fifth one. Stay well. Stay well.